Mr. Sam Petroda, Mohinder Singh Ji, Saab Bullar Ji, Sandeep Fogela Ji, Gurpreet Ji, Shan Sankaran Ji, Madhu Eragu Ji, brothers and sisters, friends, and I don't see the children who sang, but where are they? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you and thank all of you for coming here and also thank the wonderful children for the song they sang. It was sung very movingly uh, and very well. Some months ago, we started a walk from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. Prior to walking, we were finding that the normal tools that we used to use for politics, conversations like this, public meetings, was simply not working anymore. All the instruments that we needed to do politics in India, they were controlled by the PJP and the RSS. You know, people are threatened, cases are put on people, agencies are used on people. So we also are finding that in some way, it had become quite difficult to act politically. And that's why we decided to walk from the southernmost tip of India to Srinagar. And when we started, I thought, okay, dekhenge kya hota hai. After five or six days, we realized that actually walking 4,000 kilometers is not an easy thing. <laughs> you know? and, and I had an old knee injury that started to act up. So I said, now I'm in real trouble because there's no choice. One has to walk, and I'm having quite a lot of pain. And then quite a surprising thing happened. Just I started noticing that after walking 25 kilometers, 25 kilometers is more than half a marathon. So after walking two, three weeks, every day 25 kilometers, I suddenly realized one afternoon that it's strange, but I'm not feeling tired at all. I get up in the morning, six o'clock we used to start, and we used to end walking at about 7.38 in the evening, and I was like, this is very strange. I'm not feeling tired at all. What is this? And then I started asking people around that, Bhai, ye, ye ho kya ra? Aapko, aapko thakan ho hai? Everybody is saying to me, thakan to nahi ho rahi. It's very strange. We're not feeling tired. So I started to think about it, and I realized that actually what was going on was that it was not us that was walking. It was India that was walking with us. Right? And, and the large mass of people who were coming, all religions, all communities, everybody, kids, they were creating an atmosphere of love and affection where nobody was feeling tired. Almost as if everybody was walking together. Sab judke chal rahe the. Aur usme kisi ko thakan nahi ho rahi thi. Ek dusre ki madad ho rahi thi. And that's where we came up with the idea. Safrat ke bazaar mein mohabbat ki dukaan kholi. Welcome, welcome. Mm. 
नफरत के बाजार में मोहब्बत की दुकान भारत जोड़ो सी द द इंटरेस्टिंग द इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग अबाउट अस अबाउट द कांग्रेस पार्टी इज वी हैव अफेक्शन टूवर्ड्स एवरीबॉडी सम वन वॉन्ट्स टू इफ सम वन वॉन्ट्स टू कम इफ सम वन वॉन्ट्स टू कम एंड से समथिंग रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वॉट दे आर सेंग वी आर हैप्पी टू लिसन टू इट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट एंग्री वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट अग्रेसिव we'll nicely listen to it in fact we'll be affectionate to them we'll be loving to them because that's our nature so we found that when everybody started working together completely different type of energy started coming and i noticed that the government tried everything मतलब जो भी उनमें ताकत थी उन्होंने यात्रा को रोकने में लगा दी टीवी से उतार दिया पुलिस को यूज किया मगर कुछ काम नहीं कर रहा था और जो यात्रा का इफेक्ट था वो बढ़ता जा रहा था क्यों हुआ क्योंकि आप सब ने हमारी मदद की सिर्फ नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया भारत जोड़ो इज अ आइडिया दैट इज इन ऑल योर हार्ट्स एंड इट इज अबाउट रिस्पेक्टिंग ईच अदर एंड बीइंग अफेक्शनेट टू ईच अदर इट इज अबाउट बीइंग नॉट बीइंग वायलेंट टूवर्ड्स ईच अदर नॉट बीइंग एरिगेंट i can see my sikh brothers here your guru nanak ji his entire life was about this only that be humble right be humble be affectionate and we walk nothing compared to guru nanak ji i read somewhere that guru nanak ji had gone all the way to mecca saudi arabia he had gone to thailand he had gone to sri lanka so these giants were doing bharat jodo much before we were born <laughs> right and i can say the same i can say the same for my friends from karnataka basavana ji my friends from uh, kerala narayan guru ji yeah so every state in india has had these giants adi shankara adi shankara everywhere i mean and every single one of them said listen to each other be respectful not just of your own religion not just of your own language not just of your own culture be respectful for all cultures all religions all languages because they are in fact the same and the assault that is taking place in india it's taking place on our way of life sam petroda ji said that he grew up with all people living happily different languages different religions and that is what is being attacked so the tradition in india and again something leaders like guru nanak ji basavana ji gandhi ji emphasized us not to be under the impression that you know everything that the world is too big too complicated for any one person to think that he understands 
everything and he knows everything. And so really that is the disease that Sam, that Sam sort of outlined. That is the disease that we have a group of people in India who are absolutely convinced that they know everything. In fact, I think they think maybe they know even more than God. They could, they could sit down with God and have a conversation and explain to him, you know, about what is going on. And of course, our Prime Minister is one such specimen. I think, I think if you, if you sat Modiji down next to God, Modiji would start explaining to God how the universe works. Right? Yes, and, and God would get confused that what have I created? <laughs> so, so these are, these are funny things, but, but really this is what is going on. We have a group of people, you know, who understand everything. They can speak to scientists and explain science to them. They can, you know, speak to historians and explain history to them. They can explain, you know, warfare to the army, flying to the air force, whatever they want they can, you know. And at the heart of it is mediocrity. That they actually don't understand anything. Because, because in life you cannot understand anything if you are not ready to listen. There's something, the biggest lesson I learned from Bharat Jodo Yatra, that there is something to learn from everybody. We are much older than those children. But I can guarantee you, they can teach us all how to sing. I was looking at, the, I was looking at them and I was saying, you know, I can't sing like that. It's impossible. So, when you look at another person, you have to appreciate that they have an experience, they have a life, they've seen things and maybe you can learn a lot from them. Maybe if you open your ears you can listen to them and learn from them. And that is actually the Indian tradition. If you look, if you look at our country, you will find that our country has the ability to absorb any idea that comes. India India has never rejected any idea. Everybody who has come to India has been received with open arms and their ideas have been absorbed in India. And that is the India that we like. India that respects the rest of the world. India that is humble. India that listens. India that is affectionate. And that is the India that you represent. You would not be here if you do not if you did not agree with these values you would if you if you believed in anger hatred arrogance you would be sitting in a bjp meeting <laughs> right and i would be doing man ki baat So, 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 thank you very much for holding up the Indian flag in America, showing the American people what it means to be Indian, respecting them, respecting their culture, learning from them, and also allowing them to learn from you. You make us all proud. And we think of our country, you are all our ambassadors. When America says Indian people are extremely intelligent, Indian people are masters of IT, Indian people are respectful, all these ideas that have come, they have come because of you and because of your actions and your behaviors. So I thank you very much for that. It's I came here this morning, uh, Sam organized the flight, I arrived 16 hours, after 16 hours flying, 6.30 in the morning. I thought I'd be tired, but 
I am not tired at all because of the energy that you have given me. Thank you. Love you, Baji. Love you, love you. Now, now they've asked me. Now they've asked me to answer your questions. Yes. See few, that few questions. That that also would not happen in a BJP meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. No, no questions there. Okay. <laughs> Only answers. So, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Could you please sit down? Thank you. Yeah, thank questions. you. So we have many organizations which support. Four or five questions. Yes, sir. Okay, quick. Yes. Or or opinions. It doesn't. Whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but so when we you have. Ask people questions. They automatically assume <laughs> opinion is included. Yes. So we have uh, we have women who played major contribution for this program to be successful. We have Women Empowerment Organization, which helped us to make this event successful. So they have a question specific to women, and uh, I would request uh, Ms. Chansi Redigar to ask that mic, question. Mic. Just give me the other mic. Welcome, Ra Rahul Ji, for uh, California. And, um, as a Women Empowerment Delegate Association, my name is Chansi Reddy. So I would like to ask you two questions regarding this woman bill that has been, uh, you know, in the in the in the court for almost more than half a century. So when the Congress comes in power, which women's bill? The women's women's reservation yeah. rights. So that bill has been there for more than a quarter century. So as a Congress leader, what is your thoughts on it? and how are you going to deal with it? That's of my first question. The second question is, you know, in India, it's very hard for a woman for the safety issue. So what are we going to, you know, offer our next generation of the girls in India? Thank you. So on the women's reservation bill, we are committed to that. We wanted to pass it in the last government, but some of our allies were not too happy with it. Uh, and they didn't give us the support for that bill. But I'm confident when we come to power, we'll pass that bill. Uh, it's, I, think it's, I think part of the answer to your second question lies in the first question. If we empower women, if we involve women in the political system, if we give women space in the governance of the country, uh, if we give women space in the businesses of the country, we will automatically make them safer. So I think involving them in politics, involving them in business, involving them in running the country are the way to give them power. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, another Tamil community organization so who united entire Tamil organizations and they have expressed their support. So they might differ on the Congress party, but uh, they have come here for the love of Rahul Gandhi today. So I would like to invite Mr. Pugal, if you are here. Yeah. Thank you, Sandeep. Hello, Rahul Ji. My name is Pugal Anbu. I'm the president of Indo-American Society for Science, Reason, and Free Thought. I also represent uh, Tamils who live in Bay Area. On behalf of our people, and on behalf of people who believe in science, reason, and free thought, I would like to point out the, uh, we are honored, humble, and most truly proud of your journey about opening up the shops of love on the streets of hate all over the India. Tamils have long tradition of harboring brotherhood mindset throughout their civilization. 3,000 years ago, our forefathers said, Yadum ure, yavarum kelir, pirapukkum yalla uyerkum. Translation. All human beings are created equal, and every town is our town, everybody is our relative. To us, India is like European Union, with each state having its own language, its own tradition, its own festivals, its own cuisine, dress code, way of living, etc., etc. They are all different, yet we live under one country called India. Therefore, it is deeply saddening to us when someone from the Union government trying to impose one language, one culture, one tradition, one religion, one school, etc. <laughs> Recognizing this diversity to make India a robust country, our beloved leader, the Dravidian icon, former 
Chief Minister Dr. C. N. Anathurai proclaimed both in Parliament and in public forums for Manilatil Suyachi Matil Kutachi, which means autonomous rule at the state level and federal rule at the union level. Dear Raghulji, you have studied in America and you have traveled within the United States extensively and you know much better than anyone else in this room that America is the best example of federalism. Each state has its own constitution, its own Supreme Court apart from federal laws. Whereas in India, Congress party did have its own share of problems in the past, but the times have changed. The new thinking has emerged and you are the epitome of the new thinking. You are the beacon of hope and the streets of hate in India. Therefore, my question to you is that like United States of America, what's your thought on making India as a true United States of India? Thank you, Ji. If you, Thank if you, you read our constitution, the definition of India in the constitution is a union of states. And within our constitution is the idea that the languages, cultures, histories of each one of our states has to be protected under the union. So what you're talking about is already incorporated in our constitution. It's already there. The BJP and the RSS are attacking that idea that you mentioned and also the constitution of India. That's, that's the fact. Now, for me personally, I understand that the Tamil language is more than a language to Tamil people. Right? It is not just a it is not just a language. It is their history, it is their culture, it is their way of life. And I will never ever allow Tamil language to be threatened. Right? Because, because for me, threatening the Tamil language is to threaten the idea of India. Just like threatening Bengali or threatening Kannada or threatening Hindi or threatening Punjabi are all attacks on India. Right? So, our strength, unlike many other countries, our strength comes from our diversity. Our strength comes from accepting that we are all different, but we can work together. And that is an idea that I'm sure you and the Congress party are protecting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please put your questions brief, respecting everyone's time. I know you have opinions, but please question, put your questions brief. Uh, next question is Mr. Karthik from Ambedkar King Study okay. Circle. Can we allow people to... Yeah, hold on. Yes, yes. These are, please, appreciate, please appreciate these organizations have put together this amazing event. All There are Telugu, Tamil, Kerala, Kannada, all of together to make this event successful. Respect those organizations. Thank you. We'll do, we'll do. Just We've got five questions, don't worry. Brief. Just ask. <laughs> There's more than enough. We can add a few also if you want. Brief. Uh, hello, Rahul ji. Uh, I am Ganapati from the Ambedkar King Study Circle. Uh, first of all, welcome to San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we wholeheartedly thank you for taking up the fight against the fascism. So, this rise of fascism is not a mere coincidence. Uh, so, we believe in the social and the economic equality in the society and uh, the inequality actually creates a conducive environment for fascism to emerge. So, uh, my question is like, uh, what is the plan of the Indian National Congress to approve the economic and the social inequality which creates this condition for fascism in the Indian subcontinent and also at the global level? One of the things that we are suggesting 
is when we were in government, we had carried out a caste census. And the idea behind the caste census was to take an X-ray of Indian society, right? To find out what are the exact demographics of our country, right? What are the different communities? What are the different castes? How many people in each community? How many people in each caste? Because without understanding our demographics and without understanding who is who, it is very difficult to distribute uh, wealth, distribute power effectively. So that was one idea that we had. And we've been putting pressure on the BJP to release the caste census, the numbers in the caste census. They are, of course, not doing it. And we'll continue to apply pressure. And if we come to power, we will, we will do that. But we are committed, as the Congress party, to make India a fair place. And we understand deeply that India today, in terms of its treatment of Dalits, tribals, poor people, minorities, is not a fair place. Right? And there's many, many things that can be done. There is the Nyai scheme that we had, which is which was aimed at providing a minimum income to all Indians. There are ideas like Manrega. I think an increase in public education, increase in public health care. I think these are all things that can be done to make India a much more equal and fair place. Thank you. Thank you. We, ha we have our next question from Silicon Valley Christian community, uh, Mr. Jay. Rahulji, um, now the parliament, Lok, uh, Lok Sabha seats are increasing to 888. Uh, what's your take on it? Th there's a proposal that, you know, um, you know, Modi ji is actually working on. It is going to entirely be based on population. It is going to tilt, you know, the orientation towards the highly populous states, getting more and more lion's share of the revenues and everything. So... How is it going to change everything? You know, it's, minorities are going to get even more depressed. You know, majorities are going to be, you know, uh, making everybody vulnerable. So, uh, what's your, your take on it? I'd have, to, I'd have to look at exactly how they're thinking about doing it. Uh, but I think one has to be very, very careful when one ch changes the representative structure of a country. Uh, so I'd be quite interested in understanding exactly how they've come up with the number 800 and what are the criteria that they're using. These things should not be done flippantly. Uh, India is a conversation. India is a negotiation between its languages, between its people, between its histories and cultures. And it, that negotiation has to be fair. Meaning, all parts of India, all the states of India should feel that there is fairness in the process of negotiation. Um, if, I, if I see exactly how they are coming up with 800 and what is the design, then I would be able to answer whether I agree with the number 800, uh, but I haven't seen the way they are calculating it. Yeah. Yeah, but it depends how they how the ratios change. Yeah, it is currently based on the population, yes. but you'll have to un you'll have to see yes. how the ratios change. You know, I think the Parliament House, these are these are distractions. The real issues in India are unemployment, price rise, spread of anger and hatred. A crumbling education system, price uh, of education, price of health care, these are the real issues. Uh, BJP can't really discuss them, so then they have to do the whole scepter thing, you know, lying down and doing all that. So. 
Aren't you happy? I'm not lying down. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wha wha one more question from Bear. One, one more question. Bear, Bear. One more question. Disturb me. One more question. So this is this is from the Bay Area Muslim community. Please respect the community. One question from the Bay Area Muslim community. This is Mr. Mohammed Khan. Please go ahead. Milega. Rahul ji, thank you so much for coming all the way here. आपने जो ये नफरत के बाजार में मोहब्बत की दुकान खोली है उसका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आई थिंक दिस इज समथिंग विच वी वर स्टारविंग फॉर एज मुस्लिम्स फ्रॉम द बे एरिया यू नो वी ऑल वॉन्ट टू थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम एंड फॉर योर एफर्ट्स इन कमिंग ऑल द वे हियर एज यू नो दैट यू नो मुस्लिम्स हैव द सिक्योरिटी थ्रेट टूडे इट वॉज नेवर बिफोर द वे वी सी टूडे लाइक वेन एवर वी कॉल एंड टॉक टू एनी बडी इट्स लाइक क्या हो रहा है यहाँ पे वट्स गोइंग ऑन um there are so many different laws which are getting implemented which were not even implemented earlier if it is just of the security it's okay but then if it goes on and on like inching up le lijiye musliman bachchon ko jo hai they are putting in the jails for the crimes which they have not committed what strategy will you adopt or what hope are you giving to indian muslims which is going to change the whole thing back to the point where we were and get back to the normal stream to develop india the the best way for me to explain that is the line nafrat ke bazar mein mohabbat ki dukaan that is the best way i can say it, which is that it is it is felt most strongly by the muslim community okay because uh, it is done most directly to them but in fact it is being done to all minorities i can guarantee you that the same way you are feeling uh, attacked i can guarantee you my sikh brothers are feeling the same thing i can guarantee you my christian brothers are feeling the same and sisters are feeling the same thing right i can guarantee you the dalit community is feeling the same thing tribal community is feeling the same thing right in fact anybody who is poor in india today right when he looks at the extreme wealth that a limited number of people have in some way he feels the same thing that you feel that what is going on how is it that these five people have lakhs of crores and i have nothing to eat right so you feel it most because it is directed at you most aggressively but it is a phenomena that is taking place against everybody in india right and you cannot cut hatred with hatred it's impossible right you know that uh you can only cut hatred with love and affection and i was surprised at how easy it was to erase hatred in india i was shocked I didn't imagine that why इधर से उधर चलने से इतना असर पड़ेगा I didn't I didn't imagine it, right? Indian people, as you yourself have said, they don't believe in this stuff. They don't believe in hating each other. They don't believe in killing each other. This is a small group of people who have got control of the system, who've got control of the media, and who are fully supported by, you know. big money right but this is not the large mass of indian people i can guarantee you uh, i walked from kanyakumari to kashmir i can guarantee you there are more people who believe in love and affection than hatred millions and millions more so so don't don't be uh, pessimistic also i'd like to point out another thing this happens periodically in india what is happening for example to the muslim community in india today happened to the dalit community in the 80s 
If you went to UP in the 80s, the Dalit community, what is happening with the Muslims and what's happening with the Dalits there. So periodically this type of stuff happens and we have to challenge it, we have to fight it, and we have to fight it with affection, not fight it with hatred. We will do that. Thank you, Rahulji. And the one last question from the most important community of the uh, entire world, that is students. So we have one interesting student from UC Berkeley who wants to, literally begging me, I, <laughs> to ask one last question. She promised that she would conclude it. One more question. Uh, that Welcome, Rahul, sir. And thank you so much for your win in Karnataka. You've made a lot of people very, very happy. <laughs> we've, we've literally cried tears of joy. So thank you. Um, so my question for you would be, we have a lot of students who helped out here today. We really feel passionately for your cause, and, which is our cause now. But what would you say to us, we want to go back to India, we want to represent our country, but we see how the athletes, the youth, the wrestlers very, in recent times are being treated. It's very undignified. We feel very discouraged. So what would you say to us to kind of bring the sense of wanting to go back out there for our country? Yeah, the, please realize that there's a huge distortion. India is not what the media shows. The media likes to show, you know, a particular narrative. It likes to promote a particular narrative. That is actually not what is going on in India. Right? Uh, it was very clear to me in the Yatra. The, it's in the media's interest to project these things. It helps the BJP. Right? So don't think that everything you see in the media is the truth. And as a young person, uh, your country needs you. Right? And your skills and your energy will be very useful to your country. So, so if you feel like going back, do go back and help out. Thank you. Thank you, Rahulji. Thank you. And uh, Ra I picked up Rahulji somewhere in the morning, 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. So please, 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 one minute, one minute. So let me, let me conclude it, right? You know, he's, he's a normal human being like us. <laughs> he, he's not superhuman. He's a normal human being. Please, one minute, one minute. Let me thank the organization. So last question. I like the question, which is, what do I suggest that you do, right? You are all ambassadors of a particular vision of our country. You, you believe in humility, you believe in respect, you believe in being affectionate to each other. So, do not answer anger and hatred with love and affection. Show them that you are not like them. You should, you should, you should support the, the ideas that will defeat the BJP. Thank you very much.